Hi everyone, I'm Jen and today I'm going to read to you from my website jenconodal.com. The title is Marry a Christian Man, My Mother's Best Piece of Advice. Mom has given me lots of advice over the years. If you want friends, you have to be a friend. Drink lots of water more than you think you need. Read books more often than you watch television. And the list of good advice is endless. But it wasn't until a few months ago that she told me what she preferenced what she prefaced as her best piece of advice. The circumstances of my life that prompted her to give me this piece of advice was such. I was sad, confused, and not sure which direction I should take my life, and namely, my career. Up until this point, I had been solely focused on what was proving to be quite a difficult career path. I had found no instruction, book, or mentor on how to become an international travel show host. I had decided that would make me happy. Living in Chicago, I was far from family, friends, and though God is everywhere and knows no boundary of geography, I was far from Him too. I was just so focused. If I could just hit my career goal, I was convinced that everything would fall into place. I would make time for all the other things. Well, it didn't, and I'm not sure if it was even headed that way. I was having a lot of fun, but enjoying very few real relationships. And though I didn't always know it, I was lonely. And it wasn't that I didn't go out or date or enjoy the company of men, quite the opposite actually. But what I saw in most relationships wasn't something that I cared to emulate in my own life. I saw men cheating on their wives, women wanting to be wives so badly they would accidentally get pregnant, and both sexes, allegedly in committed relationships, always on the lookout to upgrade. I would rather be a little lonely than a fool. And so I had my little system. Date many, get attached to none, focus on my travel dream. Also, since I had not achieved the elevated career position I so desperately wanted, it didn't make sense to settle for a man in my current circle of influence. After all, if he were similar to me, I would outgrow him but be stuck with him when I became rich and famous. It's the brutal truth of how I thought. So, though at times I wanted a husband slash boyfriend, I wouldn't commit or say forever to someone if I knew I didn't mean it, if in my heart I thought I could do better someday. The truth is, no one was good enough for me, not even me. I wasn't good enough to find the man of my dreams because I had not fully reali realized my vision of being someone. And as the years drifted on, I became kind of numb to my desire for an authentic relationship. Oh, sure, I suppose secretly I hoped for some version of the Cinderella story. The handsome prince sees the potential in the struggling artist and saves her. But um, outside of a white horse and a fiery dragon and kingdom as far as the eye can see, I wouldn't go on for it. And as you can see, that never happened. And besides, my dating strategy was working for me. The first few dates are always the best ones anyway, I would tell my girlfriends. The men are on their best behavior, they take you to the fanciest places they can afford, and getting to know a new person, or at least the parts they want you to know, is extremely exciting. All fun, all surface, no one gets hurt. With this philosophy, I took what I thought was just a winter break from Chicago and retreated to reassess my career path at my parents' house in Texas. Contrasted to the relationships that I had mostly witnessed in Chicago, spending time with my parents opened up my eyes to something completely different. And I wanted what my parents had. Day in and day out, what I had once called boring now looked genuine rare, and desirable. I saw true love up close. Sweet comments and thoughtful actions now appeared more precious than gold. They were a team in the best possible sense. But could someone really just love me for me? Doubtful. I needed to achieve first. Then I would deserve the man of my dreams. 
Mom treaded lightly in a conversation that began on the topic of my career. I just wish I had someone to help me, someone who would talk to me, someone who really cared, I told her. She replied, it sounds like you want a soulmate. She had been intentional in using the word soulmate instead of the word husband. She understood my disdain for being that girl, and soulmate was a phrase I had not associated with female weakness. She got me, and I burst into tears. Jen, she said, my best piece of advice is for you to marry a Christian man, a man after God's own heart, dedicated to living a life pleasing to him and loving you the way that God loves the church. I reflected on her words the next few days and considered her advice in the context of how much she has proven that she loves me. I could go on and on about how much this woman loves me, but uh, suffice it to say, I am truly blessed. I thought about the sincere intention with which she gave me her best piece of advice. Up until this point, her track record had been about 99% accuracy in giving me solid counsel, regardless of if I took it or not. And although it was not the advice that I was looking for, I was hoping for some sort of strategic career guidance, it was still her best piece of advice. The woman who is kind to unkind people, generous with her time and resources, wise in so many ways, and had, has always had my best interest at heart, told me, it is not good to be alone. Marry a Christian man. My way wasn't working, and so, God willing, I shall take her advice. Perhaps you who are watching should take her advice, too. She's really smart, and she's almost always right. Thanks, Mom. I love you so much. That's it for today. I would love to hear your comments about... Um, you know, how you have chosen your mate or how you are choosing your mate in the comments below. If you like this video, please uh, subscribe. If there's a friend that, um, you know, this could open up an interesting conversation, please share it with them. Um, I will uh, see you soon. Thanks for watching.